Welcome to Bader International's Classic Online Motorcycle Sales. Today we're going to be working on Chapter 10 of the restoration of the 1957 Harley-Davidson XL Sportster. And in this chapter we're going to be doing some parkerizing on some of the metal uh, parts, the hardware, and some of the components. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and walk you through that process. So have a look. Okay, I'm working on getting all this stuff ready for parkerize. And um, the, um, there was a few pieces that still had some paint and so on on them, so I put them back in the blaster. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but... Um, anyhow, just getting these items ready to go. Okay. All right, so we got that. You see I still have some items in here that need to be shot for the other 57 that I'm working on, but I'll just uh, wait on those for the time being. Okay, so all the paint and everything is off these items now, so those can all go to Parkerize. Um, this doesn't go parkerize the top triple tree, but uh, again, I just pulled it out of the sandblaster. And when you do go to restore this or repaint this, make sure that you take the uh, the rubber uh, dampeners, hit them with the wire wheel, and then tape them off because these are not supposed to be painted uh, when you go to do the uh, restoration. So we're working forward, and um, again. Get all these items, this all goes black. Okay, we're outside. We're going to go ahead and strip all of the CAD plating off of these parts. I've got a bottle of, I believe this to be muriatic acid. I don't recall. I think it's muriatic. But we're going to go ahead and put some in this five gallon bucket. Some people will measure this off, but I'm not. So. And then we'll go ahead and add a little bit of water. You want to make sure that you do not get any of that acid on you. Obviously, it will do you no good. So let's go ahead and dip the parts in and see what kind of reaction we get out of these. And if it's not enough reaction, we'll go ahead and put some uh, more acid in there. Yeah, it looks like it's starting to eat it up. So let's go ahead and throw the other items in. And again, be very careful with the splash. You do not want to get this on you. We're just about ready to start to uh, parkerize everything. And I did want to get the items that are were CAD plated into some sulfuric or muriatic acid. And as you can see, I don't want to get too close and get splashed, but uh, you can see this was CAD plated and it's eating it off quite nicely. But it's good to move the items around so they're not sitting on each other to where they may create a little bit of an etch. So a little bit more, we'll get this stuff um, burned off and then we'll go ahead and start the uh, parkerizing process, which is very, very easy. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a bit. I just pulled all these parts out of the acid wash and you can see there's no more CAD plating to be seen anywhere. I think I'm going to go ahead and re-dip the uh, foot pegs. Uh, as you can see it has a little bit of a green tinge on it so I'm thinking it probably has a little bit of CAD still left in it. And I'm also going to do the backing plate one more time. Um, again just to uh, make sure that I got it all off. But I think the other items are good enough to go. and. Uh, these studs are actually almost good enough to just go ahead and, and spray down with some oil and call them done, but uh, I'll go ahead and dip them in the parkerizing solution anyway. So, Well, the next step in the process is to go ahead and get our parts parkerized. As you can see, we have our boxel parts. That's important. 
And then you also need an old barbecue, which this one works great. Or you can also use a hot plate. You need a can of WD-40 and your parkerizing solution. I get this out of Palmetto Industries and they're out of South Carolina. I've been ordering this stuff from them for, oh gosh, I'd say 25 years, I'd say. And then also you need a stainless steel or glass container. And I just got done dipping these parts in the acid solution just to get them all cleaned up. Because when you do parkerize, you get what I'll call a slime uh, buildup in the actual solution itself. And that sticks to the uh, containers. So you need to either clean them out with acid, throw them in the sandblaster, which I don't like, or um, go ahead and clean them with some very, very good solution. But again, the acid seems to work the best. So these are the items that we're going to need to get the uh, ball rolling here. So I'm gonna go ahead and warm up this old girl and, uh, and then go ahead and get my solution mixed. Then we'll start dipping. While we have the water heating up for the uh, parkerizing solution, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information on the actual chemical itself. It says to mix about 14 ounces uh, per one gallon of water, and I, I didn't measure my water, so I know I'm a little bit over a gallon, so I'll put in about 16 to 18 ounces. But again, um, the Owens Corp um, out of, um, out of uh, where are they, South Carolina, Palmetto Industries, uh, I, like I mentioned, I've been using this chemical for a long time. But if you have this, um, this uh, solution sitting on your shelf for any period of time, it'll actually, um, what can I say, it'll start to go back to uh, solids. So um, when you don't use it, uh, if it sit on, sits on a shelf for too long, it'll actually, uh, what can I say, lose a little bit of the, the strength, but it still works. You want to get the water up to about 190 to 200 degrees. And let's see how we are. And looks like we got a little bit more to go. So we'll put the lid back on it, let it cook a little while. And it says you wait till the water is up to temperature and then you go ahead and put the solution in. So again, if you're looking for a good um, place to buy your um, parkerizing solution, here's the information, give them a buzz, and you can tell them Glenn Bader sent you. Well, the water's just about uh, there, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in our solution. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw the lid back on it for a little bit just to get the uh, temperature up again because the solution is going to actually lower the temperature just a bit. So again, you want to make sure that you have all the oils off of any of these parts. And uh, you want to make sure you sandblast and buff and just make sure that everything is good and clean before you start uh, dipping into the water. I have a big twin transmission plate that uh, was seeping oil, so I just went ahead and threw it in my vat of acid here. So we'll let that, uh, let that uh, work away. So let's go ahead and drop in our first item. What will it be? You can see straight away it starts to, uh, what can I say, aerate or start to oxygenate or however you want to say it, but there's plenty of room for quite a few more items to be put into the actual solution. And you can put items on top of each other, but you just have to make sure that you uh, move them around while they're cooking or they'll actually sort of etch a, uh, an image or, um, or mark into the actual part. So but we'll just keep an eye on it and do some babysitting. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got motor mounts. I've got, again, I'm doing some big twin stuff. So this is a 74 kickstand. Let me go ahead and shut the lid and just go ahead and get the, uh, the temperature up again just a bit. So we'll go ahead and watch this uh, simmer and then we'll go ahead and pull them out and see how they look here in just a few minutes. The 
parts have been in the batch for probably about 20 minutes or so so we're going to go ahead and start pulling some of the items out as you can see the uh, the bubbles have stopped mostly uh, i had this one brake rod here which is too long for my vat so i went ahead and stuck this end in first uh, got it got it to uh, turn color and then i turned around and flipped it in so that's still off gassing uh, i did immediately spray this with uh, wd-40 just to help it from uh, what can i say uh, having a problem so I'm going to be doing this again single-handedly because I got to go straight from the straight from the parts into the WD-40. It's very important that you uh, get the parts sprayed down immediately because if not, um, they sort of oxidize. I'd normally be doing this with two hands, but um, can't do the camera and everything at the same time. So let's just. Pull out a few items, as you can see, it's nice and black. And some of the pieces you may have a problem with. And if you do, uh, you just have to repeat the process. Put them back into the sandblaster. As you can see, this one here obviously had some plating still on it. Come on, let go. It's a very good magnet, by the way. So let's go ahead and spray some WD on these items. And basically, you just repeat the process. Let me uh, pull out a. Here's the backing plate for the oil tank. That's a pretty good sized piece. And again, repeat the process, get the WD on it immediately. So it'll stay um, the dark uh, color that we're looking for. So that's it. As you can see in the pot here, uh, these are all turning nice and black. I still have a batch to go, so I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, camera down. I'm going to pull these items out, put the other ones in, and we'll pick it up after I have everything uh, uh, done and uh, and all the park rides finished, uh, completed. What you're looking at here is an accumulation of at least 10 hours of work, if not more, to pull the parts, clean them, sandblast, buff, put them into the solution, and then oil them down, and then we're going to have to wipe down and inspect everything we have here uh, just to make sure that we don't have issues. Uh, case in point, this is a big twin uh, transmission plate and you see the what I'll call marbling and this is what happens when you don't spray the part down as soon as it comes out of the uh, parkerizing solution. It comes up with this type of, uh, oh I don't know what you'd call it, it's almost like a, a calcified um, leftovers that we have to clean and again if it doesn't clean up well enough we just sandblast it put it back through the solution. But all the rear motor mounts, uh, this is what we're looking for, very nice Turned out very good. Um, the brake, um, the brake arms, the brake rod, motor mounts, or excuse me, the uh, battery box, uh, motor mounts, bolts down here, all the studs for the multiple shocks, more battery box components, foot peg brackets, front fork pieces, air cleaner backing, oil tank backing, then also the cams for the brakes because the the little head that pops out of the nut has to be black so you have to parkerize those instead of uh, uh, cad plating them so anyhow i'm very happy with how it all turned out even though we were dealing with bad weather outside and i know you're saying yeah southern california bad weather but yeah we were probably down in the 40s today and we actually saw some snow in the uh, hills just above the house here so uh, yeah couldn't do any painting today that's for sure so Onward and upward, we'll go ahead and get these uh, cleaned up, inspected, redo what needs to be done. And then next, next chapter, I believe, we'll be on to the paint as long as we have good weather to uh, do that work. Well, thanks for watching this segment, and hopefully it's been educational as well as enjoyable. And make sure you go to our website at www.batorinternational.com and hit the subscribe button there. Also, make sure you hit the like button on our YouTube channel, and you can also subscribe to this channel as well. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.